Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome back. This week join me as I harness my mind, body, soul and spirit. Join me as I learn and cleanse ready for spring with simple ideas, DIYs and rituals. So sit back, relax and keep on watching. It is said that harmonization of the mind, body, soul and spirit leads to more self-awareness, a raised consciousness and even a realization of our life's purpose. And within these last few weeks I have been on a journey to harness this for myself and I'm so excited to share the ideas and fun adventures with you today in the most enchanting place. That. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome. Today I'm in a very special place within the woods and it's actually a place I haven't named yet. I'm really excited to name it with you later on in the video. It has a very whimsical ancient feel and it just makes me feel like I'm home. It's unlike any other place I've ever been within the woods. So last weekend it was my birthday and I had such a wonderful week looking after myself and just having a great time with friends and family but also this year I gave myself a very special present for my birthday and that was to nurture my mind, body, soul and spirit and I gave this as a gift to myself because I didn't want to buy myself anything I actually wanted something that was completely free but first of all I needed to actually understand what that meant because I hear it all the time but actually <laughs> I wasn't too sure what that meant so I went on a journey first to actually figure it out. To look after your mind is basically when you can develop healthy thinking patterns and I think that's easier said than done but there are so many ways to help us heal and clear our mind for example through nature, music, therapy, meditation and there's always one that's worked for me best that I resonate with and that's movement and breath work. I love to do alternate nostril breathing uh, which really brings our attention to our third eye chakra which helps to clear the mind and ground ourselves and actually bring space into the mind. You just cover up one nostril, breathe in for six, hold for six and then bring your finger to the nostril you breathe through and then clear it through the other nostril. After about five or 10 minutes, you'll feel this space develop in your head where you've cleared out this energy that wasn't needed in the first place. So I love doing that and also just getting rid of screens because I find they are not good for our mind when we're trying to clear it at all. Next is looking after the body, which is of course some form of exercise, looking after our basic needs and grounding techniques. So about three weeks ago, I learned about this technique to help you breathe into your lower abs, into your lower stomach. A lot of the time, we breathe shallow breaths into our chest like this. It really grounds me so much. You basically want to sit on a seat or maybe with your back to a tree and you want to have your feet flat out firm in front of you, but really feel them on the floor with shoes or without shoes, whatever you prefer. And you want to really open your chest and look up. So that will help draw the breath down to the stomach and then you pop either hand just below your knees and press down so you really feel your feet on the floor and simply then breathe and you'll feel your breath going through to your belly and I just feel this energy just being released and actually it cured my vertigo within three days and that was the problem. Can you believe it? I had the vertigo for about four months and after three days of doing that, I healed it. So, the power of breath work is so powerful. Next, I'll get back on track now, is the soul. And to harness the power of your soul is to perhaps go back to what you love doing as a child, if you can't remember that, it's also just being drawn towards what you love and what, what brings you your ultimate 
happiness basically what makes you smile and finally the spirit and the spirit is about shaping and molding who you are your spirit isn't your body it isn't your cheeks isn't your nose it's what lives inside of you it's your energy that you're bringing along my journey this week i found out that they all overlap and you can't just do one thing without nurturing another thing and that's what's good about the mind body and the soul and the spirit great example of this is literally right now with me in the woods working on my body because I'm walking, working on my soul because it's just absolutely beautiful here and I feel my most humble self and my mind because I'm clearing my mind being outside and also yeah shaping my spirit because my mind is clear and I'm just finding out more about myself through the power of nature. So why don't we today do some mindful moments together so we can find the beauty of nature to really harness our soul's potential. <clears throat> Harnessing the mind, body, soul and spirit together as one. Let me just give you an overall map of this place so I can show you it. When you enter the place there's this kind of tree here. It's dead, I'm not sure what tree it is, but then you walk this way and you see this beautiful arched tree this gosh massive look how big it is it's wonderful and it just has this very overgrown ancient feel to it which is just so enchanting the mossy stumps beautiful moss just accumulates here because there's a little stream at the end this fallen silver birch tree here which looks like a very whimsical fairy home it has fallen but you've had all of these four silver birches grow from it since it's fallen. And then you continue down this little path here. And actually, yeah, there's a lot of ferns here that are green still. This kind of fern that thrives in moss and damp soil. And there's lots of mounds here from when trees have fallen. I think the trees don't do very well here because of the damp beech tree here. A holly tree here, <laughs> a little creepy man over there, I'm not sure who he is. No, I'm only joking, I'm joking. So here is this kind of almost tree graveyard. It's like a post battle. That looked like a a person then that that did. And there's a lot of fallen trees that you can see that are completely covered in moss and they're covered in moss in this beautiful overgrown way unlike anything I've seen here before. It just gives this really whimsical ancient feel again. Oh we've got some really really cool moss growing on this fir tree stick here. Really love how that's grown and down there it's just a beautiful ancient stream little path to the stream such a small stream hang on let's put my legs either side okay <laughs> and let's have a good look down there I can also explore further up here but I haven't yet so that is one for another day but this stream just has such a lovely sound and this is the silvery stream that actually already has a name oh, look wow <laughs> it's just you can take the simplest things a tree a stream and add these beautiful quirks they may not necessarily be healthy in with a lot of it for example you take damp you take ivy and you take vines just the way it makes this place look is just so enchanting i really like this tree because of all the indents on it i really think there's a lot of different kind of wise and wisdomous faces in there kind of like it's the ancient like the heart of this place. So I've decided to call this place the heart of the forest because it's in the middle of the forest but it just feels like the energy of it here is just so grounding and peaceful and you just have such a warm feeling. I think this tree 
here. This is going to be called the grandmother tree. It just feels very whimsical, like it would give me some wisdomous advice. So the grandma is in the heart of the forest, which we love. That's beautiful. The sounds of this place. It's just flowing, pumping the life into it again. Initially you'd think oh this place is completely gone because all the trees are fallen but at a closer inspection you'll see it's far from that and there's just so much life and wonder here that's continuing this place on through its hardships of the soil. <laughs> it's boggy <laughs> and maybe some rough winters that have blown the trees down because of that. But yeah I'm interested to know what you think about that my darlings. Harnessing the body. Now it's not every day of course that I get to explore the woods and find these amazing places. There is a whole other aspect to my life and that is my home life and I've thought about what makes me grounded at home and of course yes getting the right sleep, getting the proper food and drink, that's all great but what about what actually like keeps me really grounded, those really simple moments. So I wrote some of them down to share them with you. <laughs> for example, things like taking my shoes off when I go through the door, so I'm not just walking around in clunky shoes all the time. Wearing proper pyjamas to bed instead of wearing what I'm wearing in the day because I just don't feel right when I do that. Taking a bottle of water to bed so I can down it when I wake up extremely dehydrated in the morning. <laughs> That's true, every single day that happens. Checking in with myself halfway through a day to see if I'm okay or overwhelmed, that has helped me so much because sometimes I just feel like I need the rest of the day off and I do do that. Looking after my things, like hoovering my rug and keeping it in good condition, being in a mindful, well-adjusted space just makes me feel great and my mind is clear and being silly with myself when no one's watching and being that child that's rooted within. So for example just doing a little dance, a silly little dance, just laughing at silly things. It's just something that I think's really overlooked but we can be so stupid and it's really fun to be that person. But yes, these are things that really help me feel wholehearted and just myself. You might have things like that for you too. I'd love to hear about some simple things in your life that help you to become grounded too. How to harness the soul. Since finding this spiritual way of life a while ago, I figured and found out that a lot of the things that we need to benefit ourselves in life are completely free, like breath work and meditation and just being in nature. Whereas sometimes, I mean, I know that we really feel like we need materialistic things to make us happy. And they do make us happy, but only for like a short while. So this week I conducted a little experiment at my altar to see what truly made my soul happy. And it just came down to a clear mind and just the power of sight and looking at it. My altar hasn't been appealing to me recently. I find it's too cluttered and I just feel almost like a different person now to when I first set it up. So it's time for a change and a refresh. I first took everything out and made a simple cleanser to clear the energy by mixing a few drops of lemon essential oil with water. Then for my little experiment, I placed all of my spiritual items onto my dining room table, laying them all out so I could see them all. And over the years, you can see I have accumulated a lot of stuff. But the question is, does it make me happy right now? And what makes me happy right now? Once everything was in place, I closed my eyes, took a few deep breaths and simply looked at the table. The idea of this exercise is to see what draws itself out to you. What do you feel attracted to at this time? It could be absolutely everything, a certain colour, picture, or it may be nothing. I found to be drawn to more nostalgic items. A picture of myself as a child, 
antiques that belong to my grandma and my nostalgia box where I have items from my childhood. Also, certain colours drew themselves out to me, crystals that were green, brown and black. And a lot of these crystals that I was attracted to were of a protective nature, which felt right for my delicate mindset at this time. And because of this, I was inspired to bring in my favourite plant that also has strong protective qualities, ivy. I took some cuttings from my garden and placed it within these bottles of water and it will help cleanse this space. I was surprised with how little I wanted in my space and for my mindset now, I felt I wanted less stuff but more practical items and more natural items. When it was complete, my eyes lit up. It was the same space but it felt different, like a whole new altar filled with inspiration and space. I decided to draw an oracle card and it gave me the answer that really I just answered for myself. It was the forest card, meaning I needed to clear my mind with my breath and only then I would find the answers I was looking for. And I just reset my altar space using my mind and nurturing my soul. Now I have my new setup, I felt inspired and wanted to do something more for my soul. And like I mentioned earlier, one way to do this is by looking back to what you loved doing as a child. I have always placed a picture of myself as a child at my altar, as when I look at the picture, I see myself before the hardships of life came over. I see innocence and the purity of my soul. So it takes the mind back and I feel that's the best way to embrace the soul to think back to what you loved to do when you were a child. And you probably know what I enjoyed doing. Literally everything I am doing right now. So today I am being creative and crafting. I was drawn to the simple stick in the woods and loved its wand-like shape. So today I'm going to turn it into an enchanted elven wand using the inspiration of my new find in the woods, the heart of the forest. To make this, I needed self-drying clay, glue, and water. I rolled out small, long lines of clay, and using the glue, wrapped them around the stick, using tools to help mold the outline of the shape to the stick. I wanted the clay to look like vines and how they attach and mould themselves to nature. After the clay had dried, I then mixed acrylic paints together to create the same shade as the stick and painted this on as accurately as I could. a definition with a darker tone and a highlight with white to blend all of these tones together. This wand will be a third eye wand. I will place it to my sixth chakra, the third eye, whenever I want to unlock its full potential. You know I love to listen to the elements, so when I picked this stick up, it told me to place it to my third eye, and when I would, my mind would be cleared. So, once again, I have harnessed the power of my soul and with this new simple tool, my mind. I was also inspired last week to give myself a little makeover and I don't think any birthday is really a birthday without me changing my hair or my look in some way just it gives me more confidence this really helps me to embrace myself and I cut about another five inches off my hair because now my hair is more bouncy and playful and it really is exactly 
like it when I was a child and it helps me just embrace my true self a lot more. I just feel just so much more empowered and new and fresh again. Harnessing the spirit. So now it brings me to the last point in this video, which is the spirit. I conducted a little ritual a couple of days ago, and it's basically me harnessing my own spirit. Uh, recently, I've kind of like lost myself a bit and I just, through winter, have not felt very me. So what I did was I wrote down what I wanted to become and what I remember of what I was in the past and you might find this beneficial for you too. I think that even if you don't know ourselves we can shape and mould ourselves and we can tell our subconscious what we want to be and it will take on exactly that. I wrote down who I feel I am as a person, but also what I see myself becoming, using simple words and phrases. When I also see my true self, I have a name for that part of me. And I think you might know what that name is. Alwyn Oak. Next, I read out each point with I am statements in a bold and profound way. I used a green candle to cover each sentence as I read it out. The green symbolizes growth and new life. Finally, to finish the ritual, I used the power of visualization to manifest who I am in my mind's eye. I even used my new elven wand to help me open my third eye chakra. But of course, you don't need this. Once I was settled in with the deep belly breaths, I went into my imagination and there planted a seed of who I am. So enchanted ones, I invite you to step into the heart of the forest where together we will embrace our truest form, the spirit. You find your senses awakening and hear the trickle of a stream in the distance. Opening your eyes, you realize you are in the most enchanting place. A nearby grandmother tree speaks to you and asks of you to make your way down the path. And this is where you'll find yourself, she said, as your spirit, with all you ask of it, is waiting for you. You make your way down the path to the most beautiful trickling stream, and here it is the waters that call you. They tell you that if you touch them, you will become everything you have ever wanted to be. You reach in and touch the soft water and a green light penetrates through your fingertips. It travels up your arm to your heart where you suddenly feel your heart beat and you rise up feeling strong and energized. You feel revitalized and stare in the distance. You are now awakened and your mind, body, soul and spirit have become one. Over the past few weeks, what have I learnt? Well, I have learnt that the breath isn't only a tool to help ground ourselves, but it has the power to heal when directed. That if we trust our intuition, we can be drawn towards what we truly need, but also we can envision and plant the seeds of what we want. Also, everything we need to harness the mind, body, soul and spirit is completely free. And it feels like a long lost secret that really isn't a secret at all. It takes time, of course, but actually I don't think time is the right word to use because once you align every aspect, you'll realize that time doesn't matter as such. What matters is what's in the now, 
whether it be happiness or sadness or madness, it takes us beyond what society teaches us and even beyond what time teaches us. And that is what I have learned thus far on my journey. Thank you for watching Enchanted Ones. I hope you enjoy this video and have a wonderful, magical day. All my love, Alwyn. Zoom and zoom into my eyes and then... Oh no, that wasn't good. Hang on. And I need to open my eyes at some point. Did I just realise? Your foot's there. <laughs> <laughs>